Thank you, Louise. <laughs> Good morning, everyone. Great to see so many of you here. Um, as Louise touched on, menopause is uh, one of those subjects that people still don't, you know, it's a new thing. People have only just started talking about it in the workplace. Um, I think Davina McCall is a bit of a hero because uh, she's really got um, this into the spotlight and really, you know, people are really making positive steps forward and starting to talk more openly about it. So, uh, sorry, just bear with me. So my name is Jane Hart. I'm co-founder of Get Me Fit. Um, we founded George here next to me. <laughs> uh, George and I co-founded Get Me Fit last year um, at, at the end of lockdown one. Um, our business is essentially all about connecting uh, fitness instructors, personal trainers and health professionals with people and companies. Um, and we partnered with uh, Self Care Today, and they have a very similar model and philosophy to us, but they're more focused on the mental fitness side of things. So together, we're very much about helping companies put in positive action plans uh, to help uh, employees through the menopause. So we see that there are three essential uh, pillars which we're going to focus on today. Those are self-care, nutrition, and exercise. Um, we'll go through each one individually with our experts. Um, we try to cover off the sort of key elements um, in, within these pillars, um, but we also try to give you lots of practical tips that you can take away in the workplace, to the workplace, because what we're really conscious of with well-being, it's very high on the agenda now coming out of the pandemic, is you know, we don't want it. It, it can't just be a policy document that's tucked away in a drawer somewhere. People are really pushing to see positive action happening. So we're just trying to help people you know, move that forwards. Um, a bit of an aside on wellbeing in general, what we're finding with the companies that we uh, work with at the moment is there's a real push with um, the younger generation coming into the workforce. They really want to see, they really want to know about what you're doing for wellbeing, um, sustainability, CSR, all these things. It's not all about payment, you know, salaries and company cars and mobile phones anymore. So I think you know, if you can nail this well-being and, and specifically within that things like your menopause policy, um, you're really giving yourself a good competitive advantage. So just to quickly let you know, I think we have uh, we win the prize for bringing the most people ever to a Cambridge Network talk. <laughs> uh, but we're covering quite a lot of ground today and we just want to um, make sure we've got the experts talking to you. So... Um, I've already introduced myself and George as co-founders of Get Me Fit. Um, George is from a financial corporate background and then got uh, sucked into the crazy world of startup about seven years ago, I think. So and my background is in London creative agencies and marketing, but I retrained as a personal trainer uh, in 2018. Uh, so that's us. Uh, Tanya is our resident nutritionist and naturopath and has a lot of experience of running her own business um, prior to, to coming into the world of nutrition. Kat is one of our amazing Get Me Fit instructors. She runs some really great classes on the platform. She's also an Ironman athlete, a very accomplished, brilliant one, and a triathlon coach. And she has a real passion for um, understanding everything to do with fitness and uh, female physiology. Um, Aliyah is the co-founder of Self Care Today and like me is from a marketing background, um, but probably more of a corporate background as well. And last but not least is Teresa, who is a accredited coach and she's also um, has uh, expertise in menopause and mindset. I'm now going to test you all. <laughs> Download. <laughs> so what is menopause? It isn't black and white. We're human, so we're all different. Um, they're cited to be more than 34 different symptoms, probably more. Some of these are mental, some are physical everyone's going to have a different mix, um, you know, different pick and mix of these symptoms and um, the severity of these symptoms. And also as people transition through the menopause, these symptoms are going to change. So um, that's why we really like this holistic approach of looking at these three pillars, because it means you can dial up and dial down your emphasis, depending on you know, the individual person and the stage they're at. Um, the menopause, quite surprisingly, I think, is um, on average uh, an eight-year phase for people, and uh, most people start to go through it from between 45 and 49 years old. 
So it's just really to make the point that it's not a one size fits all. So I'll now hand you over to Aaliyah, who's going to tell you a bit about self-care interventions in the menopause. That's perfect. Thank you. And hello, everyone. Well, self-care, I mean, I don't know if you guys understand because it's the buzzword right now, but it's been popular subject in recent years. But not everyone knows exactly what it entails. Not sure if you guys do, but it's not all about spa days and pampering, although it sounds wonderful. But it's about prioritizing your own mental emotional and physical health. When going through the change of menopause or dealing with unusual life circumstances, self-care becomes even more important. For instance, some women go through the menopause with a little impact on their daily life, but others experience symptoms that can last for several years and have a negative impact on their performance and attendance at work. A bad night's sleep can, as you know, can affect concentration, while heavy periods or hot flushes can be physically distressing and embarrassing. Not only that, the psychological effects can also impact relationship at work. For some, the symptoms are so severe that women are even forced to leave their job altogether. Crikey, as you guys know, that's not what we want. So that's why businesses are now considering a more holistic approach and providing a human centric focus where they are prepared to provide the right support and respond to the changes that their female staff go through. Now that leads on to us, what are the holistic approaches? Now these, there could be various interventions. Now I'm going to talk to you about the three types and that is one of them is providing mindfulness meditation. This is a way of focusing our minds on our present experience. Being mindful can help menopausal women at work to cope with the challenges and stresses of daily work life. Sometimes we mispresent delights or make our difficulties even harder because we get so consumed by our thoughts about the past and future. Now, I guess most of you do consume a lot of things going in our head. Mindfulness means we can notice our churning thoughts and find calm even in the midst of great difficulties. Fortunately, as we know, mindfulness can be a skill that can be learned. The first step is to be mindful, to be aware that our minds are on autopilot most of the time. The goal during mindful moments is to empty the mind, but to become an observer of the mind's activity while being kind to yourself. The second step is to create pause. Now that can be quite difficult for some people, but it's so essential. And taking a deep breath and observe one's own space, thoughts and emotions, and non-judgmentally, and this will automatically result in a more calm and helping the lower the stress. Now, you might be thinking, oh, mindfulness, it's not for me. Um, I don't want to take one hour away from work. Well, that's fine because we've got something called micro mindfulness habits. These you can entail in your daily routine and just focus on small moments and being more mindful on the present. Now, by creating these micro mindful moments, it's just bringing your attention and focusing on it, taking just a few seconds, not even minutes, just a few seconds to appreciate it and then taking a deep breath longer than usual and exhaling for a little bit longer. And then you'll feel the relaxation coming into your body and mind because they're interlinked. For instance, an example could be taking a shower, focusing on the water and you know, just focusing on how the water's hitting your skin and the smell of the soap and just exhaling with a deep breath. There's another type which is called mindfulness-based stress reduction therapy. This is more evidence-based and it's scientifically proven and it offers more circular mindfulness training that includes how to meditate. For people who are not so into meditation, it gives a basic formation of how to do it. This can help menopausal women to learn new ways of responding to their challenges more effectively. The combination of mindfulness and self-compassion enables them to live with greater sense and ease, dealing skillfully with difficulties as they occur. It has shown to help with intrusive thoughts, stress, anxiety, depression, sleep difficulties, and so on. But with mindfulness meditation training, menopausal women can discover how to be happier, how to stay calm, how to stop overthinking, how to deal with fear and increase confidence and compassion and so on. Now this goes on to 
Well, women suffer various type of symptoms and everyone is different. And this can be fluctuating and be felt to varying degrees. Although an average symptoms can last for around four years from a woman's last period or around one in to 10 experience them for up to 12 years. Some of the most typical symptoms of the menopause include psychological issues, and these can be mood disturbances, anxiety or depression, memory loss, panic attacks, gosh, loss of confidence and reduced concentration. And these can also include hot flushes, brief and sudden surges of heat, usually felt in the face, neck and chest. I can go on, the list is just ongoing. Experiencing any of these symptoms can pose a challenge for women as they go about their daily working life. There's no one size fits all approach to menopause transition at work due to the unique way in which a woman can experience the range of potential symptoms. And this is why employers need to foster in more of a holistic well-being strategies where the women can choose from a range of self-care options to assist with their specific symptoms. And this is depending on the severity, the regulatory and the duration. For instance, these can be workshops providing educational awareness, tools and techniques on specific symptoms, toxic topics such as, I'm just giving you one example, sleep managing, how to sleep better. Um, then this can help them to manage the symptoms better in their daily working life and perform productively at work with no worries. Now there is one key area, and I spoke about the psychological and emotional well-being, is the mindset reset. And this is where Teresa will talk you through more about why this is vital for rebooting your brain, embracing change, and ultimately performing with confidence at work. And I still hand over to Teresa. Thank you, Alia. Hi, everyone. So as Ali has just discussed, there's no one size fits all. Some women are struggling to manage their symptoms at work, which is making them feel less able to do their job and having an impact on their colleagues and work life, and of course, their home life. Helping those who are suffering with symptoms to achieve a positive mindset is key to managing menopause at work and of course, at home. A few areas an effective mindset reset program should focus on are conquering negative thoughts, reducing negativity, and knowing what you can and can't control. Uh, basically, we have about 50 to 70,000 thoughts a day. 95% of those thoughts are exactly the same as we had yesterday as we're creatures of habit. As we're wired for negativity, it's important to be aware of these thoughts and how these thoughts are impacting our day-to-day -day life as our thoughts affect our emotions and then have a knock on effect to how we behave. And of course, ultimately the quality of our lives will be affected. Reducing negativity is so important for our well-being. Being aware that too much news, social media, negative thoughts, moaning and groaning is draining. It can leave you feeling anxious, stressful and fearful. Reducing these things will help to protect you, your energy levels and leave you feeling more focused, lighter and happier overall. Now, I'm sure you've realised by now with the pandemic, you cannot control it at all. You can't control the weather. You can't control the economy. Nothing. You can't control people as much as we want to try and control people. The only thing you can control is how you respond to life. If you re overreact to everything, again, you will be left feeling drained, exhausted and unhappy. Important to know that this is where you have control and probably one of the greatest uh, skills to master in your life. There are so many benefits to a positive mindset at work and of course at home. And these include being able to deal better with stress and challenges and recover faster from setbacks, improved decision-making and be able to move for, from a problem to a solution more easily, become more effective at communicating, resulting in less conflict. Now, and also uh, be a better understanding your team's strengths and weaknesses, and of course your own strengths and weaknesses, which is key. Here are a few other things to consider to support your female workforce. Having an open door policy creates a safe place where your staff can come and freely discuss their struggles and concerns without fear of losing their job, 
which is why so often women keep silent and often leave their job. Develop a menopause policy with your employees and support and appoint you know, a menopause champion or a coach for when the staff need additional support. Education and informing leaders through workshops and training. This will benefit the work environment and also relationships outside of work with female friends and family. Of course, talking openly about menopause, it, for some reason or another, it's still a taboo and stigma. Again, through training and workshops, so no one is left feeling embarrassed or uncomfortable about this subject. Practical support, such as time off for doctor's appointments. So again, the employee doesn't feel embarrassed if she needs to seek professional help and take time off. And of course, giving the staff the option to have flexible working hours or working from home can be added to the menopause policy. Giving this staff this option will potentially avoid an absence day as it could be on this day, she just feels so um, unwell and unable to attend the office, but yet she can still perform her duties at home. Giving her this option will reduce the absentee days. And finally, if the employees wear a uniform, maybe providing something like a lighter jacket or a top can make all the difference. Other things such as ventilations, fans and temperature control as comfort can make a, such a huge difference to their mental and emotional state. Thank you for listening and I'll hand you back to Alia. That's perfect. Thank you, Teresa. Now, how do we go about implementing these self-care strategies? Well, as you're aware, that every organisation is different. So we really look thoroughly as to what's happening in the workplace. By that, we actually started by compiling a survey at work to explore the impact that menopause or perimenopause symptoms can have on a woman. And then we look at their symptoms that are triggering them the most and find out the kind of support that they need, because we understand the kind of self-care strategies they need to be delivered so we can create more bespoke spoke toolkits and resources for your organization. Now, what can the ranges be? It's very various. So some of them I've highlighted here can be bespoke consultations. Now, these are one-to-one -one support, giving more immediate answers and personalized treatment options to relieve symptoms. And these are from specialist menopause doctors. Now, these are actually experienced GPs as well that are trained in menopause. And these are approved by the British Menopause Society. So you are well looked after with that one-to-one -one consultation as well as Teresa, she will be providing a safe place for you to talk about more in the mindset fitness arena. Then we have targeted workshops. Now these are very bespoke as we said when we've compiled the survey and got the findings and some of them just to give you examples is by understanding menopause for managers which can be crucial for you know to them to be aware of what they're colleagues are going through or understanding menopause and mental health because they're very much interlinked as well then we have self-love challenge we found this very successful where women can actively boost their self-esteem and practice self-help techniques from a qualified menopause practitioner and then we also provide a self-care box. These are helpful wellness products to take care or treat and uplift menopausal women when they're just trying to keep calm, cool and collected so they can deal with life's challenges as they come. So it's more or less having their own personal Zen sanctuary. So, yeah, that's more or less a brief kind of what the kind of self-care we actually provide. And with that, yeah, thank you for listening. Hi, thank you very much. Um, I'm going to touch on exercise um, during this phase and offer a few practical tips and advice for you. So first of all, starting off with why exercise is important and going anti-clockwise round the dial. First of all, it gives some me time, some time away from that to-do list. It improves our sleep. Simply put, the more you exercise, the more the body craves and requires sleep. Maintain bone density and strength. This is a really key point during this phase. Bone density for clarity is all about the strength and fragility of your bones. And you've all probably heard of osteoporosis and osteopenia. What's really important to understand here is that oestrogen helps to maintain healthy bones and muscle mass. So when our oestrogen levels drop, our bodies are no longer naturally looking after our bones and muscles. 
In the next slide, I'll cover how we can combat this. But just to let you know, females hit peak bone mass at around 30 to 35 years old. And after menopause, with the effects of the estrogen loss, bone mass can accelerate to two to 3% per year. Exercise can also help promote heart health and muscle mass. Activities such as swimming, cycling and running are great for the cardiovascular system, our heart and lungs, as they raise our heart rate and, in, and then look after our heart health. However, we also need to mix up the activity choices we do and include activities that preserve bone, bone health and muscle mass, which again will be discussed on the next slide. As we know throughout life, exercise can help control weight. During the perimenopause, one of the most talked about observations and frustrations is an increase in weight, in particular belly fats. And without getting too sciencey, this is due to how our bodies no longer metabolize carbohydrate in the same way. But fear not, this can be offset with some smart nutritional choices, advice coming soon. And as a reminder, Exercise helps control weight by using calories that otherwise would be stored as fat. Exercise releases chemicals such as those listed in, and these chemicals play an important role in our mood. These chemicals are often referred to as the happy hormones and linked to warm fuzzy feelings. Exercise can also help reduce joint stiffness and inflammation. And the less inflammation we have in the body, the better. A moderate exercise stimulates an immune response, that of producing anti-inflammatory responses in the body. And the final point, flexibility, mobility and balance. Linked with mixing up the types of activities we do, it's encouraged we include activities that promote flexibility, mobility and balance as unfortunately this also declines as we age and during the menopause. We need to stay supple as we age for functional tasks like picking things up off the floor or reaching up high. Activities such as Pilates and yoga are effective as they strengthen the core, stabilizing and postural muscles. Because just as a reminder, our bones break easier post-menopause, thus the ability to balance and not fall increases. So it's clear there's lots of benefits to exercise, but as employers, what can you do to support your workforce? Some ideas include a well-being audit, find out what your staff are doing, enjoying, not doing, and identify those gaps. You can consider introducing the Get Me Fit platform and the wealth of classes and expertise on offer. You could consider some branded home starter workout kits and water bottles. Mats, bands, weights can all be used at home by all. Encourage walking meetings. Not only is this the active option, but also a great option for females when battling those hot flushes. And finally, you could think about setting some team challenges, an opportunity to keep people motivated together. Ideas include some virtual walks, sponsored runs, or some competitions to clock, clock up exercise hours or steps. I now want to touch on the relevance of strength training as part of your exercise regime. It is the strength work which promotes bone building and maintaining muscle mass. So a key point to take away here is through your exercise choices, you need to do the job of the missing hormone, estrogen. And this is most effectively done through strength training activities. By this, I mean adding some load, resistance and weight. The benefits of strength training are also very similar to the benefits of exercise. So I won't talk through each bullet individually, but what I really want you to understand is that we no longer have the benefits of muscle building from estrogen thus have to incorporate activities with weight in order to get the same stimulus. Again, the experts on the Get Me Fit platform can be used here for class options, 
and or one-to-ones to guide you through this process safely. But please note, whatever level you're at, you can start and progress. So if you're not currently doing any activities with strength working, you can start to incorporate some movements just with your own body weight. If you're using some bands, you can progress to weights. And if you're using weights, you can lift heavier. The aim and the idea we want to get to is to lift heavy weights with a low number of repetitions. You can see listed the types of movements that we are suggesting, squats, lunges, press ups, and I'm sure familiar to most of you. And also to note, these exercises are very effective for the pelvic floor muscles, which yes, I'm afraid weaken as we age and go through this phase. And a final point on rest and recovery. As we get older, it becomes more important to rest and recover, in particular from those harder sessions. And it's also important to remember when we rest, we're actually getting fitter and stronger. This isn't actually happening whilst we're training. Rest also allows cortisol, a key hormone, to settle. And we certainly don't want this elevated during the menopause phase. And it also reduces our risk of injury. So to wrap up and remind you, the changes you experience can be significant, but with some sensible decisions regarding your activity choices, you can go a long way to counterbalance and offset those changes and stay in fine fettle. And I'll pass over to Tanya, who will talk about nutrition. Thank you and hello and welcome to everybody. Um, so as Aaliyah, Teresa and Kat have also all shown, the menopausal transition really is a journey to be embraced. And just as you would prepare for any journey that you go on through your life, you can prepare for the menopausal transition too. And simply by supporting your body with the right ingredients and environment, it needs to thrive <clears throat> you can influence the way your body responds to the hormonal menopausal changes that it has to encounter. The key, one key thing to remember is the sooner that you start to prepare your body, the better equipped you will be. And ideally, you should be thinking about the menopause 10 years before. So when you're around 35, it's a good time to actually start preparing yourself. The first place to begin is blood sugar balance. The typical Western diet is full of sugary, processed, convenience foods, caffeine, alcohol, and is often paired with poor sleep, chronic stress, the perfect setup for disrupting blood sugar balance. So taking steps to balance your blood sugar is an absolute non-negotiable for female hormonal balance to help manage anxiety, help control weight gain, help maintain bone density. And there's a narrow range between the ups and downs of balanced blood sugars. And it's easy to rise above or drop below this range, triggering an emergency that cortisol, the fight or flight hormone, will respond to. Blood sugar spikes can be caused by eating sugar, refined and simple carbs, alcohol, caffeine, nicotine. And these spikes release the hormone insulin to take this excess sugar and store it in the liver. But there's not a lot of space there, so the excess gets stored in the fat cells. As your blood sugar levels then drop, um, which can cause headaches, tiredness, irritability, lightheadedness, cravings, your stress hormones react to this emergency. Cortisol sends messages to the liver to, really, to retrieve the stored sugar and to the brain to create a craving for your body's quick fix, whatever suits you. This fix releases sugar and, this brain, and to the brain and makes you feel better. And the cycle then continues with levels of spiking and dipping and it's a complete, um, roller coaster it can be called um, and it what it does is leaves you totally exhausted at the end so to help balance your blood sugar there are two things to include at every meal one is fiber and one is protein 
So foods rich in fiber take longer to digest, they burn more slowly, they keep you fuller for longer, and they stop help, help to stop the cravings. So eating more whole grains, colorful vegetables, fruit with the skin on ideally. Protein um, helps you to keep to feel full and won't, won't raise your blood sugars. So eating protein at every meal is essential, especially a good dose of plant proteins. It's also important to take care of your adrenal glands. And this is particularly important in a working environment where there are, there is, can be a great deal of stress around. And your adrenal glands are the hard working part of your body that deals with stress. And while stress reduction is important for just about every aspect of your health, it's an absolute necessity for the menopausal transition. Many people are aware that they're running on empty and need, need to find more ways to relax, yet life's busyness often gets in the way and it never actually happens. The adrenal glands can produce a form of estrogen to help compensate for the menopausal decline in estrogen that comes through the ovaries, not producing it any longer. They're also involved in progesterone production. The reduction in the two hormones, estrogen and progesterone, during the menopause is responsible for many of the symptoms. So the adrenal glands can be a significant help in supporting a smooth transi menopausal transition, but not if they're overworked, overtired, and otherwise engaged dealing with stress elsewhere. And research has shown that increased levels of adrenal hormones can have a negative impact on mood, especially during the menopausal transition. So another good reason to take the pressure off and really nurture these glands. Another area to look at is phytoestrogens and adding these into your diet. They are naturally, phytoestrogens are substances that occur naturally in plants. They have a similar chemical structure to our own body's estrogen and are able to bind to the same receptors that our own estrogen does. So in perimenopausal or postmenopausal women, when your body's estrogen is naturally low, phytoestrogens can help ease the symptoms of low estrogen, such as hot flushes, bone loss, mood regulation. It's always best one little tip to take phytoestrogens naturally through food before you consider herbs or supplements. It's safer to get them by, from a varied diet. Look for traditional, unprocessed, non-GMO, organic fermented soy products such as tempeh and miso. Um, you can, brassica vegetables are amazing, broccoli, Brussels sprouts, cabbage. Supporting thyroid function is especially important because oestrogen stimulates thyroid growth. So as oestrogen levels decline during this transition, too little oestrogen can result in not enough thyroid tissue. And many menopause sympt symptoms overlap with those of low thyroid. So the menopause can lead to low thyroid function and, the and low thyroid function can make menopause symptoms significantly worse. And thyroid hormones also play a part in maintaining healthy bones. So with oestrogen in your body, it's in really important that the oestrogen is processed and eliminated safely. Oestrogen um, is, is not just one hormone, it's a collection of hormones. And once they've been used, they must be processed and safely eliminated. And two plant compounds, um, two plant compounds in particular, can be helpful here. So DIM, a phytonutrient found in cruciferous vegetables, such as broccoli, cauliflower, kale, watercress, and resveratrol found in red grapes, black grapes, blueberries. And it's recommended that people throughout their menopausal journey include plenty of these beneficial plant compounds in their diet. The other for safe um, processing and elimination of oestrogen, gut bacteria is key. Gut bacteria is key for your overall health, but particularly for safe oestrogen processing. And the best way to support that is by consuming a rich variety of plant foods every week and including a daily serving of kefir, kombucha, sauerkraut or kimchi. 
Next is to look at toxic load, because we all live in such a toxic world and regularly come into to contact with potentially harmful compounds on a daily basis. And many of these, sadly, are known to be endocrine disrupting chemicals. So when you've got so much hormonal turmoil going on in your uh, disruption going on, you do not want to be adding any more to, to your body. Um, and these EDCs, the endocrine disrupting chemicals, are found in pesticides, plastics, cosmetics, toiletries. And whilst you can't avoid toxins completely, you can go a long way to reducing exposure if you take proactive steps to change your habits. So in addition to reducing your toxic load, it's important to support your ability to safely eliminate the ones that you can't escape from. So include plenty of water and fibre in your diet to support regular bowel elimination. Re regular exercise and sauna helps to eliminate these toxins through sweat. Then thinking about preserving bone density, um, we are all at an increased risk of, met of osteoporosis at this time due to the loss of oestrogen. And so reducing caffeine, alcohol, quitting smoking, eating a diet high in calcium. You need calcium because there isn't enough in your diet, your body will steal it from your bones. Um, dairy sources of calcium can have hormones in them, which can be, not be helpful at this time. So look for non-dairy sources such as broccoli, kale, salmon, soy, and some fortified foods. Vitamin D is key for your bone density, 20 minutes a day in the sun is best, and vitamin K, um, which comes from leafy green vegetables. Some key nutrients are magnesium, which is stress protective, stress supportive, calm and balancing, which you can get from dark chocolate, avocado, uh, chia seeds, pumpkin seeds. Vitamin C helps um, protect against harmful toxins and vital nutrients in the stress response. The B vitamins process oestrogen and support cardiovascular health, and they come from salmon, dark green leafy veg. Omega-3s are good for cognitive function and mood balance, and vit a vitamin D, as we've said, for healthy bones. Um, and for smoothies are a great way to incorporate these nutrients into your diet, easy to digest, easy to make. And I have several clients who um, within their workplace, they make smoothies, we've designed smoothies and they give them out every morning for people to support this transition. And also um, providing seven day meal plans so your staff actually do know um, what they should and shouldn't be eating that can help them. And that really is everything from food in a quick whirlwind tour and I hand you over to George. Thank you, Tanya. Um, well, hi everyone. We've heard from all the experts now, um, but before we move on to the Q&A, we thought it was worth highlighting some of the stats to reinforce what's been said so far. Um, so there are 4.3 million menopausal women in the UK right now, and the number is growing quickly. Um, a third of the working population are soon to be over 50, believe it or not, and a massive 90% of women in the age bracket report their symptoms of the menopause have had an impact on their working life in some way. But in spite of all of this, there's still a third of women who never speak to their GP about it. Workplace advice to help women manage their symptoms is rare. Um, and there's only 10% of companies currently that have a menopause policy in place at all. And as, as Jane said earlier, you know, there's been so much done recently to open up these conversations on the subject, but to move it forward, um, we feel the focus needs to be on implementing kind of sound workplace strategies and guidance. And it's important not only to help those who are suffering with the symptoms, but also those who are trying to manage them. We touched on this earlier, but you know, the reality is many of the managers who are trying to help women who are struggling at work may have absolutely no idea about, about the menopause um, or any knowledge of it themselves and may well be men, which, which makes it even harder. Um, so as an employer, we think openly communicating your understanding of the issues and your intention to help is the very start. And as always, tone at the top is essential because the attitude of business leaders just drives the culture of the business. 
Um, but what's in it for the business? Why, why do it? You know, there may be some of you who are trying to push this conversation at work. Um, and I'm a lover of uh, a lover of stats and facts, so I thought I'd throw a few uh, a few scary ones in here just to give you some context as to why why it's such a big big deal. Um, there are 14 million working days of absence a year in the UK alone as a result of menopausal symptoms. So the reality is, if your workforce includes women over 40, um, then you are going to be one of the companies that are footing the bill for this. And What's more, and this is the one that I, I, I can't, I only read or only found this stat a week ago and can't quite believe, but they did a survey um, in 2019, 900,000 women quit their job as a result of not being able to cope with their menopausal symptoms at work. And, you know, these are 40 plus women. These are experienced women in your teams. They may hold senior positions um, and they aren't always that easy replaced, um, which brings me smoothly on to the, to the next point. You know, I think everyone on this call is probably, probably aware, you know, recruitment processes can be expensive, they're time consuming, um, and it's not always easy to, to find the right people. Um, so investing in retention must make more sense and investing in the recruitment cost of replacing those who quit. Now, we already noted, or I already noted earlier, um, you know, kind of the number of women that are in the age bracket that have kind of had an impact on their working life. But actually, it's worth noting that one in four women who go through this transition at some point will experience severe symptoms. And, you know, as, as Theresa touched on a number of times earlier, you know, the, the impact on their productivity is huge. You know, the ability to focus at work when you're struggling with some of these symptoms is, is, is hard. And my last last scary stat, I promise, Bloomberg just actually reported um, there's an estimate been made of the global productivity loss from menopause. And it's been estimated at $150 billion a year, which is just slightly mind blowing. You know, but the reality is many women don't know enough about what they can do to help themselves. And they don't know how early they need to start. You know, I know just from my personal experience, I'm 45 and I've only just realized, you know, <laughs> that, that I, I should I should have known about this, you know, earlier and, and and actually you know the work is a perfect place to, to educate and, and I think investing into programs that do that and support women to help them through can pay dividends in the long term um, and not forgetting that you know if you showcase if you showcase you, you care um, you know it reaps rewards generally because if you you know if your employees watching on can see that you as a company take well-being seriously generally um, you know it, it has a great impact on everybody. Um, so I won't, I, won't, I won't blind with any more scary stats, um, and we've had a few questions in. Um, so I think I will, uh, I, will, I, will, I will flip to those. Sorry, I've just tried to a quick summary. Um, this is actually what's been said already. It's a summary slide. We'll send this round afterwards. It's just kind of the, the top tips um, that were mentioned along the way, uh, the way for work, um, which, which I won't read out because you, you've already had them. And I say we will, we will forward it around afterwards. Um, but yeah, I think we'll move on to questions. I think we've got some, some good ones come in. So I have been following them in the chat. So don't worry if you asked one earlier. Um, I think maybe um, Tanya, if we can go to Lots you first. Tanya. Yeah, <laughs> Lots yeah. of interest on the nutrition side. Um, so the first one was, what do you recommend for plant proteins? So plant proteins, uh, chia seeds, quinoa, hemp seeds, um, the legumes, um, you do get some protein in certain vegetables, um, but keen, keen, uh, chia seeds are a little magic thing because you can just sprinkle those on salads, add them to smoothies, um, and they are nutrient, very nutrient dense and very easy to eat. Just put them in smoothies. I'm uh, sorry, put them in soups as well. It would, how much would you try to have a day as a rough idea? Would you just put it on your, like, would you do a spoonful once a day, ideally, or would it be more than that? Um, it's, so with protein, it's best to spread your protein um, allowance through the day. And that's really an individual thing because it depends on your size, your weight, your level of activity, both at work and out of work. Um, and therefore, um, your protein intake is, um, it's completely bespoke. So it depends how you how you spread it through the day but um, um yeah i i work that for when i do one-to-ones with people I, I work that out on a, a very individual basis and so that would be part of have one tablespoon now and one tablespoon in the evening or whatever thank you so we also had another um i'm not going to say this right why are phytoestrogen better than our own estrogen so why not use human estrogens that are available in various formats why go to food so that's to do with the safe processing of estrogens and 
um, the phytoestrogens that the actual estrogenic effect that they have is much weaker than the human, our own estrogen. Um, but it still has an effect to alleviate some of the symptoms. Um, but he, some, there are many side effects with, if you were to take um, a, a human form of estrogen and it's how that again is a very individual thing with how your body um, can process that estrogen safely. And we, you've all heard of some of the breast cancer like BRCA1, BRCA2 for um, breast, the breast cancer tendencies, genetics, and it, so it depends on your whole body makeup as to how well you process and safely eliminate those estrogens. Thank you, Tanya. Um, we had a question about um, if there's a test to establish estrogen levels um, and if you um, can only take HRT for a limited time, knowing, knowing when to start is key. Um, so we don't have any kind of medical professionals on here, um, but I, I can I can say from my personal experience, um, you can um, you can actually privately get blood tests to check out your levels. I don't know, Tanya, if you know yes. um, a little bit more about that. So sorry, we're going to stick with I you. Have, so your topic. Have, there's something called a Dutch test that you can do to check your whole hormonal level. Um, yes, there's there's plenty of testing that you can do. And as an employer, it's not particularly expensive to do that privately if you wanted to support employees um, who, who, yeah. who they're in that place. Uh, Teresa, are you putting your hand up there? Or? Yeah, I just want yeah. to say that I have got um, clients that are actually on HRT and they're in their 70s. So there are a lot of people, I mean, obviously I'm not a medical professional here, so don't take my word for it, but I do know a lot of people that are still on it. Again, it will depend on the area you live to whether your doctor will be giving this to you for free or you have to pay privately, but I do know a lot of women in their 70s that are still on HRT and have been on it for 30, 40 years. So I don't know the rights and wrongs of HRT at all, but I just thought I'd just share that as a yeah, thank you, you know, Teresa. discussion. Um, we also had a note on, um, somebody mentioned in, in the chat just about the menopause policy and, and, and not having one and thinking about it. Um, there is actually the CIPD website, which I'm sure you're all really fami familiar with, actually has um, an example if it's of interest to anyone. Um, so I'd suggest like take, taking a look. Obviously, you know, the, the key is really not, not just to put a policy in place, but to, to have one that you know, is meaningful and, and has a strategy around it um, in terms of how you're actually going to deal with, with the practicalities, because obviously every, every woman is going on their own journey through this. There isn't really a one size fits all. So it's more, it is more about having a, a toolkit that you can use to help them, um, knowing that the better they manage their symptoms, you know, the more productive and engaged they're going to be at, at work and the less risk you've got of, lose, of losing them. Um, I'm just going to flip down the questions. Is there? There's another one. Can you recap the point? Oh yeah. Can you recap? Somebody asked um, oh, if we could recap um, the benefits of preparing for the menopause from your mid thirties, which I think Tanya was you again. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, so it's just ensuring that your um, things like your blood sugar balance um, is is right and your bone density so if you think about this from your 30s um and your when you when you stop making estrogen and in, in the hormonal transition of the menopause when you stop making transition uh, making the estrogen that then can lead to osteoporosis if you've taken this into account and starting to build up your bank if you like and starting to think about eating calcium um, because otherwise your body will take it from your bones. So it's, and start thinking about looking after your thyroid, which is a major key um, gland that um, is really important to overall functioning of, of your overall body. Um, and it's just put, putting your body into the best state prior much prior to having the turmoil and facing the um, actual trauma of going through all the uh, imbalances um, imbalances in your um, in your hormonal in your home in your hormones um, so it's putting yourself on a good path um, to just balance your body really make sure your body's in the best fit state to then take 
dips in estrogen and uh, you know in the beginning it's quite it's up and down and the the levels are varying and people are not quite sure what's going on they can you know suddenly may get night sweats or they um and they're irritable they're moody um and just helping putting putting your body just into a balance and under and making sure you know what to take on that affects your mood because that's particularly important um and yes setting setting yourself setting yourself up as early as you can and 10 years before is an ideal time an ideal time before before levels start dropping before and and potentially turning into something um you know something that's going to give you more problems later in life brilliant thank you tanya um, kind of several comments rather than questions, but I know just to say somebody's referred to the fact that, um, you know, from personal experience, I've had to fight to get a blood test, which is which is true. But I say that there are um, you can do it privately. Um, so it might be, you know, it might be a good thing for, you know, as an employer to do um, to support that, because actually understanding, you know, if, if it's causing an issue is, is I guess, the start of it. Um, and then a number, you know, kind of comments about things, you know, I have to say we've done a lot of um, research on this and been to a lot of talks on this recently um obviously from a from a business perspective it's important that we we know as much as we can and anxiety has come up jane hasn't it mm. so so many times so actually you you know you've got to remember you're dealing with employees who who you know who are often feeling really anxious about what's happening to them and that is that is key in in how you deal with it and obviously goes back to kind of the Teresa and, and Aaliyah in terms of you know actually mindset is 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 so important um you know women getting their head around what's happening to them and trying to view it in a positive light um which you know can be incredibly challenging and um, is a really is a really important part that shouldn't be overlooked um is there anyone um who has any other questions or are we can i just say something george of course you can yeah yeah i just noticed someone made a comment um we do not have a menopause policy but our ceo has offered us workshops on meditation and relaxation which is great but i think what uh, I want to stress here is often you'll have people that have been meditating for 20 years that are still neurotic. So meditation on its <laughs> own does not work. I can't get this message out enough. You have to get this part. We forget that this part of us, our mind is controlling the show. So if we don't get that part of us uh, sorted, particularly when you're going through menopause or any other challenge like the pandemic, as an example, it's not going to be pretty. So it really is, yes, meditation is great as a tool. Self-care is great as a tool, but it's so important to get your mindset. It's got to be right to be able to deal with any challenge in life. So along with menopause, it's great for everything else. So I just wanted to say, yes, meditation, relaxing, but if you're your mind's going on a all the time, it's not going to work. It really won't. It'll work for the time that you're in a, med in a meditation. You can't go into a room for an hour when you're dealing with your children, your work, your life. You need to be able to be able to find ways to control your mind and, and keep present and all those things will help. So I just wanted just to share that. Yeah, no, that's yeah, really helpful. Yeah. Thank you, Teresa. Absolutely. Um, we've been asked if we can share the slides and to say we, we absolutely will. And um, we've actually going to we've got a slightly longer form copy with a, with a few notes um, just so you've got some of the, you know, some of the some more information, I suppose, to take to take away the highlights of what we said. Um, but is that another? Yeah, no, that's great, guys. Yeah, yeah, whatever you wish us to send, I will send that round. Yeah. <laughs> We've just put our um, contact details at Get Me Fit, but obviously, because um, we thought if we've got everyone's details on, um, we'd need a very big slide. <laughs> so just <laughs> if anyone has any questions, just ping them to us and then we'll um, reach we'll out them. to the team. Brilliant. Now that's been so useful. And I think it is, it is one of those things where uh, you're always kind of thinking, well, what is going to happen to my body? Has that is that a, a symptom of that? But I actually think it's really important to know that there's such a vast range of things to understand what your colleagues might be going through. And I think it wasn't until one day, you know, one of my colleagues was having a problem and actually had to say, yeah, it's menopausal. And you kind of go, oh, my goodness. That, that's all going to hit me in a minute. What is it uh, that makes you go and find out? So I think it kind of uh, it helps you to understand each other, actually, as well as Absolutely. what's going on with your own body, which I think is really important. No, it's 
lovely session. Thank you. Really, really good. Welcome. Thank um, you for having us. We really appreciate it. <laughs> no, you're more than welcome. Thank you for doing Thank that. You. Actually, I was just going to say we had one question submitted um, beforehand, which is about um, uh, how employers can better su uh, support their employees. And I really hope that we've answered that question from several different aspects. <laughs> Yeah. Um, so I'm hoping the person there who asked it will know who they are and kind of nod or say yes. <laughs> um, so yeah, I think if we've got nothing, nothing else um, coming through on the on the chat, then we're at eleven fifty seven. So yeah, no, it's fascinating bad, right? reading some of your experiences on the chat. Thank you so much for, for thank sharing. Thank you so much. Good to meet you all. Yeah, um, thank um, you. Thank you all the speakers. Thank you, Jane and George, for coordinating everybody. No problem. <laughs> all right. Have a lovely day. Thank you. Oh, Lots of thank, thank you's coming you. in. <laughs> Bye. Thanks Bye. All. Bye. 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 Bye.